I'll, uh, Hi, everybody. Can you hear us? Uh, you guys are muted. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. <clears throat> Good. All right. Then we will call the 23rd of March Planning Commission to order, and I will ask staff to take a quick roll. All right. Uh, Mary Fine. Here. Uh, Wayne Clark. Yes. Kathleen Degenhart. Here. Brian Frank. Yeah, I see him. Here. 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 Ross, Rossi Mecca. Here. Amanda uh, Dillon is excused. David Rushka is excused. Eric Torkelson. Here. Here. Very good. We have a quorum. We will about to see, which will be approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Were there any changes? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? You guys have it, the minutes are approved. And move on to item D, February 23rd draft minutes. Get the letter C. Same thing? Yeah. All right. We'll take C and D together. <laughs> All right. Then we'll move on to item 2A. Special use permit for done. Thank you, Mayor. All right, so this is a special use dam site Lansing Bay Architectural Plan Review for Domino's, a proposed restaurant um, to be located at 10 922 West National Avenue. Uh, the property is zoned C4 Regional Commercial District. Uh, a restaurant is a special use in that district, and we have a public hearing scheduled for April 19th. Yeah, on the right, you saw that. So this building used to be the location of uh, Menchie's frozen yogurt. Uh, in the past, it was also a, an enterprise rent-a-car lot. Um, so it's seen a lot of changes over the years. Um, it's been vacant for uh, some time. So the special use permit uh, has to be renewed. Has to, has to be new special use permit, I should say. Uh, this Domino's will serve pizza and you know, related food items as a Domino's does. Uh, for takeout and delivery only, there will not be any in-building dining. Uh, the proposed hours of operation will be 10.30 a.m. to 12 a.m. daily. Uh, so this is the floor plan. Uh, the main part of this renovation is to, is to the floor plan itself. Uh, there's going to be the customer area in yellow. Uh, people will enter the door here. Remove the screen here so you can see this better. Uh, this is the publicly accessible bathroom right here. There's this customer kind of common area uh, where they can receive their order and wait. Uh, and the bulk of the area will be devoted to kitchen and preferences in blue. Uh, this includes an office, a cooler, and this is a general kitchen area. Uh, and then this kind of module over here is where the drivers will enter exits uh, for delivery. Is that, sorry, is, is National Avenue on the, on the left? Um, I, I, I yes, I believe National Avenue is on the left. National Avenue is on the left. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, so then here's just a simple site landscaping plan. Uh, Domino's with this proposal will be making some small adjustments to the site. Uh, they'll be updating a refuse enclosure to be located in the northeast corner of the lot, the northeast back corner here. I'm just kind of reconfiguring that. This enclosure, uh, and then there's going to be new plantings in the beds. I believe we have a this. So they're going to be refreshing the landscaping beds at the site. Uh, so that you're pretty much you know, refreshing the site, but pretty much keeping it consistent with kind of the general design from before. Uh, there will be some modifications I'd like to the exterior, just I think it would be totally made, essentially. Uh, staff is recommending approval, uh, subject to the revised site landscape architectural plans being submitted with the color of the exterior paint, um, the, a landscaping species plan approved by the forestry department, and then architecture elevations for the building exterior and for the proposed refuse enclosure. Uh, one thing to note is that there will be uh, one window which they are proposing to get cover in some way because it's going to be, I believe, looking into the bathroom. Is that correct? Is the right? Yeah, yes. so one of them is a, yeah, one other one is a private room. So that's just what we want to see the elevations for. Um, to make sure that it's a consistent look with the rest of the building. Other questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
the closing hour of midnight. How does that compare with the neighbors across the street, McDonald's and Taco Bell? Um, I have not looked at that specifically, but I believe it's fairly consistent with that corridor uh, with having a variety of the National Avenue is pretty, a pretty large street and has several fast food restaurants that are open late to the night. I don't know exactly the times of those uh, per se. It wasn't something we're particularly concerned about with its location, especially because there won't be a lot of people going to the site. They'll be um, primarily more for the kind of delivery style um, operation. <clears throat> I think some of the places across the street have been closing earlier, but I think that is because of staffing shortages more than operations and not positive. But I thought just noticing driving by once in a while. Thank you. Twice noted. We'll, we'll take a closer look at that and uh, do a comparison. Some of the Taco Bell, the McDonald's, some of the other restaurants in the area, the Arby's, Arby's, we can have a report for. Uh, I got a question real quick, or, or maybe just a comment. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So I know like the Taco Bell and the McDonald's, they're always open to like uh, midnight, one, two o'clock in the morning. So really it's, uh, it's going to be equal if they're probably going to close earlier than some of those other stores are. So. Yeah. Follow up question. Okay. Any other questions? I was just going to ask, is this going to impact the one that's on Loma? Uh, uh, we're moving. We're moving that. Yep, exactly. Okay. It's closer to my house, so that's okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> we'll approve. Second. Okay, there's a motion and a second. If there's no other discussion, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? You guys have it. The motion carries. Thank you. And we will move on to item three. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so item three is a master sign program application for home two suites. <coughs> this is a hotel to be located on 70th Street. Excuse me. Yeah, because so, the acoustics in here are terrible, speak up a little more. Will do. Will do. All right. So let me restart then. Uh, this is a master sign program application for home two suites. A proposed hotel is currently under construction at 70th Street. 1212 South 70th Street to be precise. Uh, that you, know, you, can, right now you can see the elevator, it's, it's tower being built. So that's in, in, in progress right now. Uh, this is a master sign plan for this hotel use. And it qualifies under our master sign program because it is larger than 25,000 square feet. Uh, it's actually 79, oh, almost 80,000 square feet in total. Um, under our master sign uh, program, Part of the sign ordinance. Uh, this type of building would be allowed two wall signs with a total of 410 square feet and one freestanding sign with a total of 150 square feet. Uh, in the proposed uh, master sign plan, uh, there are three wall signs, uh, which is one more than is allowed, uh, but a for a total of square footage of less than what is allowed at 383 square feet, and then one freestanding sign also less than what is allowed at 30 square feet. Uh, these are the locations uh, for the signs here. Uh, there's a wall sign located on the north side of the building, a wall sign located on the west side of the building, a freestanding sign located on the west side of the building, and another wall sign on the south side of the building. Uh, so taking a look at the wall signs, again, we have three proposed signs. Um, two are allowed by the master sign plan or this. Uh, the west facing sign is the smallest. This is this one right here on the kind of primary uh, street frontage of the building, uh, 43 square feet. And then the north facing and south facing signs are on the sides here and here. That's 170 square feet each. Uh, the freestanding sign, this is the plan for that. It's a 30 square foot sign here. It has a masonry, uh, well, it's a concrete block base with a uh, kind of brick veneer finish uh, the masonry kind of element there. Uh, there's also a cap feature and there's a plant planting uh, or down to the base of it as well. Uh, this sign will be six feet six inches tall, uh, which is below the maximum height uh, allowed. So that meets our code. So staff recommends approval um, subject to, uh, as, as amended here. Uh, so we had originally just requested a, you know, the, uh, a adjusted plan with the relief and the depth of symbols of all sides. Uh, the applicant has already uh, provided those, so that's been met. 
Uh, and then we would also like a landscaping plan for the area around the base of the precinct design subject to the city forestry review. Our city forester kind of got back to us uh, recently and just wanted to see an overview of where that landscaping is um, and, and what species will be included. And then we believe that this should be approved because it's not undue concentration of signage. All other having one more sign than is allowed under the master sign program, they were doing less total square footage of signage. And we believe it's appropriate um, with the scale and, and size of the property and the site itself and how that site is um, displayed on the site. So, any questions or comments? Thank you, Zach. Any questions? I have a question. Go ahead, Brian. Um, for the three signs, have we have we done this before with other ones like the uh, the what was it the uh, the Holiday Inn that was built? Do they have do they have three signs on their building as well, or is this going to be just for this place? I don't know if the Holiday Inn has three signs, but this the practice of allowing an additional sign as long as you or additional signs as long as you don't go over the max limit. Is something that the planning commission's been comfortable with, you know, uh, in the past for other for other situations where when this comes up. So it's, you, I guess you wouldn't be recreating a wheel; you'd be within a wheelhouse of what's been done before. All right, that, that's all I wanted to to find out. So I would move approval. Okay. So motion to approve. Sorry. And a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? I say that motion carries. Thank you. On item four. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, our next item is a conceptual review item for uh, transit oriented development or TOD. They're here with us this evening. Um, their team behind me here. And um, they're going to make a presentation. I'm just going to go over a few highlights. Um, I'm going to turn it over to you guys if you guys want. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll give a quick uh, overview of it, and uh, we can have any questions that uh, entertain any, you know, they're here to answer any questions after. So this is the, uh, the site, uh, the former, there's two, two properties involved um, as part of the first phase of development. What this is, is going to be a condominium project, um, Urban Pioneer. Um, at 80th and National Avenue, the south side of National, just west of 80th, uh, the former Piermax Bank site, as well as the former um, undeveloped site, which was formerly the, the Hobby uh, store, which uh, burnt down some years ago. Um, to the west of the site is a small uh, vacant gas station, and west of that is Flower Girl, uh, Flam and Newer Business. <laughs> south of the overall site is a uh, railroad, in the north side is uh, some National Avenue, you know, neighborhood commercial businesses. So just a closer look at what would be developed. The sites A and B are the topic for tonight's uh, conceptual discussion uh, where the building would be constructed uh, for the new condominium project, about 43 uh, condominiums. The zoning is uh, C2 neighborhood commercial. The site is about uh, three, just over three quarters of an acre, or about 36,000 square feet. And, um, indicated the, the former sites. Um, so it's zoned appropriately for this type of development. Um, and what's proposed is gonna be um, a 17, roughly a $17 million project. And it will include 43 condominiums of, of which uh, six of the eight, uh, eight ground floor townhome condominiums, six of which would have uh, garages, had garages on the back side of the building. There'd be another 23, one or two bedroom condominiums. And then 12, what are we called micro condominium units, which are just smaller, um, not, not like studio apartments, but sort of along that line, um, of just a smaller apartment, so to be called micro condo units. The site's going to feature um, about 37 parking stalls, 27 of those stalls will be underground, and then another 10 surface uh, up the surface behind the building. As you can see in this rendering up top here, it does maintain good urban edge along the corners of National Avenue and 80th Street, so it's built right up to the, the front uh, corner of, uh, of, the, of the property. And behind the building, there would be parking. There would also be future, potentially parking and development to the, to the west of the site. And that's a future project phase two. The, the image in the middle is the back side of the building, where you can see those attached garage units to uh, the six on condos. Yeah. 
Oh, okay, you're correct. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So 37 underground, so a total of 47 apartment stops. Look at the site. Again, you can see the building built up to the corners. Uh, the street frontage of 80th and National behind the building where the serve, 10 service apartment stalls would be. And then we have the uh, access to the 37 underground parking stalls here. Uh, as you pull in what is now like the uh, the bank's uh, drive through drive through lanes, you pulling into that and then entering the building, ramping downward underneath the building to the 37 or so apartment stalls. Uh, one, one point to note, we'll get us a little bit in the uh, landscape, the more detailed landscaping plan. Uh, they, they are proposing bioswales, um, rain gardens, and possibly some other uh, pervious types of pavement within the, within the site that'll accommodate stormwater runoff. And they're working on a stormwater management plan that we submit in the future. And the site will be combined, would need to be combined as part of the development before building permit could be issued. The two properties would have to be combined to one via a certified survey map. And that would be a future submittal as well. Get into the floor plans. There's different types of unit types within the building. The first two floors are unique in that you have, um, I guess, obviously you have your, your lobby and main entrance corridor, common area on the, on the ground floor. Uh, but then there would also be uh, two condominium units on, on the ground floor. And, uh, and then these, these over here. And then the second floor is actually loft areas for these main level kind of idioms. So moving up to the second floor, I should note that the, this area here has a, uh, we'll have an art installation. We'll see that in some of the elevations um, later on. But here's one of the main entrance um, foyers. And then there's also a street entrance here uh, for, for tenants. And this is the entrance to underground parking behind the building. There's also going to be indoor bike storage, a mail room area, a common area, both on the first floor and partially on the second floor for, for tenants. This is the second floor. Again, this is part of that first floor condominium units. This is with a second floor option or, or amenity, I should say, uh, for a lofted area, which could be used as a you know, bonus room, additional bedrooms, living space. Uh, you'd have open views to the lower level from that lofted area. And uh, there would be also be a community community area right here, uh, right here. It's part of the building. It's just a view of, of the typical style of animating unit. Um, it's called a, considered a townhome style of unit where you have your main living space on that first floor and then the staircase up to that lofted area on the second floor. See a lot of the modern amenities with you know updates, you know, kitchen, you know, kind of an open space. Murphy beds would be an option as well as you know laundry in the unit. View looking down from the loft to the lower level, just conceptual view. And then moving on to the third floor, uh, again, more condominium, standard condominiums, you know, around the outside. And here's where we get into those micro condominium units that we're talking about uh, previously. Units uh, F, E through G, uh, would be micro condominiums, those are the 400 to 600 square foot units uh, with Murphy beds, uh, more like a studio apartment, but this would be a condominium offering. And then kind of units A through D are the, are the larger units that wrap around the outside. Notice that a lot of these have, uh, that all have balconies um, facing National Avenue, facing the side street, facing you know, the parking area behind. Nice money to have an upscale unit. Just another view of uh, conceptual rendering with the inside micro unit, the Murphy bed, uh, access to restroom, TV, you know, everything sort of built in all in one tax space. And the fifth floor um, is shown here, um, in more of the standard variety of um, kind of idioms. It's the conceptual view of what that could look like. 
one of the unique uh, features, the sustainable features of this project is that, you know, aside from the stormwater management, uh, bio spills, rain guards we talked about on the at grade, but on the very on the roof of this building that we're proposing, um, uh, solar field on the upper rooftop level, as well as a rooftop deck. And then we get into the elevations. Um, this is the elevation facing the uh, National Avenue. First two levels, um, first floor facing National and Grade would have walkout patios as well as a walk-in individual entrances to each of those units from, from National Avenue directly. This would be a more common uh, direct access for residents to the common area. And then the main entrance, if someone wanted to just enter, would be this area with G. You can see the street level graphics that they're proposing. These are initially proposed on the window. It sounds like they're going to be scaling those back and be placed on an interior wall rather than appearing as a window film on the, on the exterior of the window. And there's a variety of different materials that uh, make this building quite interesting. Um, we just go through that material list here, but there's a hardy board cement, uh, which is like a cement fiber, fiber finish uh, which, with a natural finish, um, which would be the a represented here, it's still A. And then B is the uh, glass, sorry, reinforced concrete low copper Tina finish. And that's B, uh, which is featured in this tower feature, sort of lighter gray areas here. And then there's a smooth uh, finished concrete panel, which is D, over level here. And there's another style of hardy board finish, which is see the wider areas. Um, there's going to be a lot of, uh, in terms of the balcony areas, those can be finished with a wood grain composite uh, deck, finished decking. And then there are going to be uh, glass uh, railings or wall barriers around the around the balcony areas, also separated from lower level uh, walkout units. The, uh, we talked about the historic pioneer neighborhood transits and window film. It would have some, uh, it's originally proposed window film since they've scaled that back to be on the interior wall and have something probably respective of the neighborhood, making again, making this uh, a very neat looking project. So, the back side of the building, we talked about the attached garages for some of the condo units on the lower level. And then this K is the entrance to the underground, 37 underground parking stalls. And then different finishes, sort of a you know, mirror image of um, somewhat of. What was on the front of the building that we just saw, similar materials with the uh, hardy board siding, the white areas here, and this darker brown area here to simulate wood siding, and then this that copper, faux copper uh, siding here at the feet. Get balconies wrapped around the back side of the building as well. And the sides of the building, both the west, east, and west sides, this is the east side facing 80th Street, and the west side facing that other uh, vacant commercial lot. The cross section elevation. Um, looking at if you were standing at 80th Street looking west, National Avenue would be on your right, the surface parking lot of this site would be to your left, and then this shows access to the underground parking. And you can see the different floor by floor levels of you know 11 feet, 10, 10 feet, four inches, you know, going on up. And that, that fifth floor actually, the ceiling heights uh, jump up another foot or added uh, ceiling space and height prominence of that upper level. Random slide here, I think, from the CDA. But the uh, landscaping plan, uh, they do have um, you know, a landscape plan put together. This is what they're, they're showing, but a variety of different uh, deciduous plants, shrubs, trees on site, all of which being you know, behind the buffer the parking area, tent parking stalls, service parking stalls. There would also be bio swales built into this to accommodate some of the runoff and rainwater. Uh, when you're coming into the site from, from 80th Street, if you're not going to the underground parking here and you're coming into the site to park one of these 10 stalls and you can't find a spot, there is actually a turnaround here, a little bulb at this end, uh, come back around and either hopefully find a spot or, or exit the site and park in the street. It's a more rendered uh, view of the, uh, of the landscape plan. These lighter gray uh, tan areas, gray areas are the, the rain gardens. A recap of the elevations uh, with some of the 
tree work and landscaping that would be surrounding some of those uh, lower level um, and great patio areas for our homes. That, that includes my overview. Uh, we have the team here. Uh, if there's anything you guys want to clarify or just uh, introduce yourselves, feel free. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, any questions from the commission? Uh, yeah, Eric, go ahead. So I, I, I agree, Steve. This is a very high quality project. I like the idea that there's a whole ownership concept to this. But one thing that kind of struck out that I just want to talk about a little bit is the whole solar panel concept on here. Is this like the first for the city? Because I don't recall any other projects coming before plan commission. I would say it, it probably is. Uh, there's been you know a number of residents throughout the city that have started to you know put these other individual single family homes and so on. But I can't think of one that really has come to us before with this type of entity. And then so yeah. Where I can lots of considerations that when it when it mm -hmm. had boring with the solar panels action here. So the cost of consideration was calculated at so but we do know that they have made themselves back to the tax rates that we see that as like a establishable for us and um that can be this push your back off. So the final stage is right now. I can add to that with the infrastructure fund you build. I just went through with all the grants that are available and so on. So I'm pursuing that angle as well. And it will be helpful with that because it's a cost considerable for the construction of those grants. Is that like roughly a thing like how it All in for all 40. Mm -hmm. you yes. About that was like that battery pack. So it's like we had to build a bunker to get to the underground to shoot to store the batteries. And our homeowners association would then damage it as part of the operational system. So uh, something that we think is part of that. That's why we put that in So it's with this place. So far, so good. We can't hear you guys. Oh, they can't hear you on the screen. Did, oh, did, you, hear, did you hear the question? Did you hear the question, Rossi? No. It was basically on the solar, and if it was the only one like that in West Dallas. Oh. And then they spoke briefly about the due diligence they did on approaching the project. That's my cliff notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Can I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, so what, what is your target population for these condominiums? Um, is it, I'm assuming it's the rental um, condominiums. Um, what, what do you, what, what's your target for this area? If you so want to get a couple, a couple of closer yeah, metrics, then how we and here's the number of fifteen guys that have my blocks. So you, you know, it's a very diverse range of different homeowner buyers, uh, from elderly to millennials to uh, young people <laughs> that are looking to own rather than rent. Um, we even have a couple of handicap accessible units in there. Just uh, know that there's a demand for that in the area. So we think we can get a cross section of different buyers. There's not one target market that we're going to go after. It's going to be a conglomeration of all these different types. And part of it is uh, we're doing some pre sales right now, looking to potentially sell a block of units to corporations or other agencies and entities like the Medical College or you know, larger organizations like that. And so far, the re response has been very good. So um, we're highly optimistic that we can sell all 43 of these units over about a two-year period. Also, oh, okay, so they're, they're units for sale, not for rent. Yes, yeah, they're only for uh, sale. It's home okay. ownership, yes. What does one of the typical units cost? You don't mind me asking. 
Our lower priced micro condos are going to be just below $200,000. And our higher priced townhouse units with lofts and all the accoutrements that we put into them, we're hoping to get over $400,000. But we only have a couple of those. So that the price range is between two and 400000 Okay. Well, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, I did have one more question. Yep. Um, on one of the um, landscaping designs, I saw a fence line. I'm just wondering where that fence line ends because I know we have that railroad that's going east and west behind the property. Um, is there going to be a fence line around there? Uh, we currently have no fences in our plan, but we do know that there, the railroad exists to the south of us. And uh, at some point in time, we wouldn't include the idea of putting in a six foot fence if we required more security or safety or even some privacy to the site. But at this time, we, we really planted the site up very densely. So especially on the south side, uh, we're very cognizant that there's some power lines there, the rail line still exists. So we are looking as, for as much buffer space as we could. And if you even look at the size of trees that we specified, you know, they're large enough that they'll have impact as soon as we plant them. Right, right. And, um, and the bioswell pretty, it would be pretty deep too. Uh, is that what, like four or five feet deep? Uh, the deepest one is about three feet. Okay. So uh, we're just trying to capture whatever flows naturally off the uh, parking lot, mm -hmm. you know, surface lot back. We'll pitch that, you know, to the back area there and just capture that. All that water will either permeate into the soil or evaporate before it ever hits the stormwater systems. Right, right. Okay, I'm just worried more so because more residential population brings more people around the area, which means children, people in that area, and then you have the railroad track. So that's just my only thought about the fence, fence line there. Um, so we didn't put the fence in the plan. Uh, we wouldn't be opposed if the city wanted us to. Okay. Thank you. I was just gonna, I was gonna make a comment too. I was gonna agree with the safety concerns. If there was a fence in there, I would feel more safe with the project, especially considering that you know, kids can run out into the railroad tracks or run all over the place. You know, I'm just thinking of it from that perspective too. So I agree with that. I think it's a good idea. Um, as we revise the plans going into the next commission <coughs> meeting, we'll have the best. There's no other discussion. Mr. Chair? Yeah, Alderman White. Um, Alderman Marty White, from the second district. Alderman. This is my district. Um, on the fence issue, I don't believe anybody in the neighborhood has a fence. Technically, there are, there are young ends who are running out of the railroad tracks there. And so, you know, most of the safety is like survey, getting up various separations and whatnot. Um, I have a couple questions, though. The Murphy beds are considered primary beds, or those are like for guests? Those are those would be yes beds. Those would be yes beds. So every unit has an actual bed. Well, the micro units are dependent upon the Murphy bed. Okay, so so that is the primary bed. That is and that in most units, yes. I'm a big fan of density. I'm just wondering how, I, I guess I'd rather see bigger units with actual beds, so like maybe more attractive, maybe a little higher rent, or ownership price. Guess I'm a little interested in the condo model. I see a lot of things are going to rentals, a lot of single family homes are going to rentals. I'm wondering where we're going with this. Are things going to turn into Airbnbs? Is there, is there going to be a requirement that they're owner occupied or would the owners be allowed to sell them? Well, in our homeowners association uh, documents, we are providing the opportunity for people to use Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, but as the owners get together to finalize those, I think we're going to have some restrictions on it. Right. Maybe not. So, yeah. Just, you know, there's, it's a different world than it was 20 years right. ago. As yeah. far as, you know, I like the tower because I really don't like these really boring roof lines we have. Like, our, I think our LD4 building is really boring roof line. Um, so that tower is strictly ornamental. Yes. Well, our uh, staircase going up all the floors. Flows through that tower, 
and it also allows the access to the roof. So that is the roof access. Yes, the that is access. Access. There's two roof access points from fire protections. And then just one comment on finishes. And look at the six points from the building that went up when our first film was done by the farmer's market. And and it's I think it's got an overuse of surface finishes. Um, maybe it was just dated, it seems really dated to me compared to what's going on across the street for the last the rest of us. Heard at least maybe four maybe. If you guys remember when the West first went in with the yellow, a lot of people were against it, but I think everybody's kind of accustomed to it. Then I look at uh, Zen Heritage, the senior living there on National Avenue. Um, again, it's my district. I'm at the gas station there looking across the street, and that to me has too many different finishes on it also. And I'm just wondering if we could, that's going to be up to you, the staff, or you guys, you know, how many different surface finishes are we counting six there? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, there's that. With the so windows. There's, there's two different types of party, party board siding. So, I mean, that's like, so that's, I mean, it's different color, but I think yeah, it's more like the same yeah. material. And then the uh, B is the uh, fiber reinforced concrete, or copper patina finish. Uh, glass, so is, fiber, is, fiber is glass. it gray on there or just exposed concrete? The gray is actually a copper patina. Look okay. at that bluish kind of uh, light green. Not against exposed concrete necessarily. I get yeah. I guess I'd like to see a, maybe a dye in the back of that a little bit. Oh, well, you know, all in all, I think it's a great project. You know, it was actually at that fire. I think it was New Year's Eve. That's New Year's Eve. Somebody heard it. Yeah, it'd be nice to see something there going on there. And you haven't, sorry, it was out projected purchase prices. Did you say to the two million for it? And remind me when what's the largest? How many bedrooms in the largest? The largest unit would be a townhouse unit, which had, would have two bedrooms. And a roof and a garage. So this isn't really aimed at families. This is, uh, I wouldn't necessarily go wrong. Not family small kids. kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean we don't think a family yeah. five or six. No. Five. Thank you. That's just my question. So we appreciate it. Well, we want to make sure that you yeah. real quick, we didn't. I, we didn't hear anything about the the fence. What, what what did you guys say about the fence in the beginning? Uh, Marty was Marty was saying uh, that uh, Alton Weidel was saying that uh, the fence that many of the uh, properties in the area don't have any fences um, uh, going up to the railroad. I said, he, he, I, I'm assuming you're fine with them. I'm fine with the fence. fence. Yeah, that's what that's what he was saying. A suburb of the city. Yeah. I have one more piece to that is that we've talked with Union Pacific and we've dealt with Wisconsin Electric already within the right of way. And we're going to get permission to be able to add plantings that extend beyond our property line so that we can continue to create more of a landscape buffer. You guys can mow the rest of the grass along in there on the other side? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I know, we're not asking for more. <laughs> I mean, obviously, the aesthetics of the corridor are going to be important to us. So, um, we have a motion. I think we're just, I think there's, there's no, it's just it's 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 yeah. they're voting on the concept. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> All right. <laughs> if that wraps up discussion, then but we'll conclude item four. Okay. What I five. Sure. Okay, item five is a uh, proposed zoning code and math update. Uh, now, you know, we brought this before you, uh, the last meeting and uh, approved it. Thank you very much. Uh, we would, after, after you approved it, we took that, uh, that same ordinance and map to the county council for public hearing on March 15th. And council uh, was very positive, I think, overall uh, on, on the ordinance. And the map. However, they had a few comments that they wanted a little bit more time to digest and for us, for staff to work on before they're ready to approve it. So this schedule um, lays out kind of where we've been um, and, and where we're going next. So we're up to um, you know the March uh, through the March fifteenth public hearing by council, and then uh, we're going to our next step. Uh, we're just presenting this tonight, just for your John Steve would say edification. Um, 
information. Uh, but uh, we're going to have a, a safety development meeting next week on March 29th, and we're going to present the changes to the county council. So basically, the more or less the same presentation we're just sharing with you tonight, we're going to deliver to the safety development committee, um, and then we have to come back to the planning commission in um, in April, um, followed by. Um, May 3rd public hearing with, with any changes that are uh, that council sees fit. So Zach's going to give us a, deliver a little presentation here, going over the options that uh, we're looking at based on the uh, public hearing feedback we received. And um, we'll get into more detail on that thing. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Steve. So uh, this is just briefly, we're just going to run through this is a, a kind of summary of what these amendments will be. I will present this to you again in April. Um, and this is just going to show you the options that the council is looking at for some of these and then in April we'll show you what they actually decided to amend it as. Uh, so the main kind of hold up uh, was home-based businesses. Um, so we've worked with Kale from the attorney's office and developed a couple alternatives uh, for the council to consider. This is uh, what we'll be discussing at the safety and development committee meeting. Uh, the, some of the council members would like to see more restrictive uh, regulations for home-based businesses. So uh, we've got kind of three options for them. Uh, the first option, as originally proposed. The second is just increase some of the restrictions. And the third is to completely eliminate them from residential districts. Uh, we can this a little bit here. Sorry, there's a delay. All right. Uh, so the first option, as originally proposed, there are limited use in all um, residential in any area where residential is allowed, uh, but they can only be permitted for one or two unit dwellings. Then we have a series of regulations um, that they have to adhere to. Uh, the second option is to increase the restrictions. So this would just be for these residential districts. Uh, the commercial districts would not be uh, impacted by these regulations. Uh, but in residential districts, the changes would be that uh, these were recommended by uh, Alder Logan Grisham and Alder Logan Keen um, that there would be no more than four total clients entering the premises per day. Uh, there should not be any appointments between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. And then that the home-based business should not uh, be any activity licensed by the state of Wisconsin, uh, which includes this extensive list of a variety of things. Some uh, things that could be impacted by this would be uh, potentially, let's see here, uh, I don't know if you in particular, maybe acupuncture or chiropractor, somebody were to do that from home, they would not be able to. Uh, one of the big ones is barbering or cosmetology. Um, accountants would not be able to have their home to do the taxes there, um, massage therapy would not be able to, would not be able to do that, etc. So uh, that would be a, a more restrictive version than what we currently have. And then the third option is to eliminate them entirely from residential districts, so people could not have clients come to their home for business. Uh, so those are the options the council will be considering. Any, any before we get any questions about that? Yeah, it's so like an option too. How do you how do you enforce like if you're uh, running a yeah, that's a great question, and that's something that our, um, our, I believe, Kale from our attorney's office was saying this would be a difficulty um, of doing that option is that we would technically have to have somebody, you know, to review that they have to sit outside all day and scout the number of people. So it's something that's going to be very difficult to enforce. Something the council will be considering right. what they're looking at these yeah. options. Put your neighbors to work. <laughs> yeah, document it. Bring sure, bring sure. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I mean, there is that technology, right? So that could happen. I mean, so, yes, but it could be a little bit onerous. That's right. Any other questions? Moving forward, uh, one of the changes that we're proposing that there's, uh, I, I believe, we're going to be good with moving forward is a slight tweak to that uh, small restaurants item we presented with you before. Uh, the rural instead of using two types of restaurants: a restaurant and a restaurant limited. So a restaurant limited has to be smaller than 2,000 square feet as we had before, um, but it also um, must be closed between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. So there's um, these types of restaurants you know, that are they're small and that they aren't open during night hours, they would be permitted, uh, they'd be allowed as a limited use, they wouldn't have to go through uh, the planning commission and capital council review, um, unless they'd be building a new site, which they'd have to still do that planning commission, but no special use permit would be permit, I should say. Uh, and then a, a a regular restaurant, you know, anything that's larger than 2,000 square feet or open at night, that would still require a here. So that's a, a slight change uh, to what we had originally proposed. Then just some smaller tweaks. Uh, we're uh, adjusting some of our language related to nicotine sales to kind of match the, the current ordinance. Uh, we noticed this uh, 
small discrepancy um, that would have accidentally made it a little bit less restrictive. So we're closing that loophole. Uh, we're tweaking our principal use definition uh, to more clearly show that there uh, can be more than one principal use on a lot. But originally, we had the primary or predominant use of a process. Um, we're going to change that to a primary or predominant use of a process. Uh, this is important for our mixed use buildings. Um, there might be separate units that have different uses, and that's okay. And it's something we would, you know, that's something that we want the code to reflect that it is, that it's allowed. Then the last thing is for our one to two unit dwellings. Uh, we noticed that uh, our, we wanted to expand our limited use criteria to allow one to two unit dwellings if they're in conjunction with other uses in commercial districts. Uh, this would have impacted you know, Marty, perhaps at, at Benno's. Uh, we want to allow you to have a one or two unit dwelling uh, above a you know, commercial use in a commercial district. And that now kind of had been something that had been kind of slightly overlooked you know, there. So there's some opportunities to improve the code uh, during this time. So we're going to be taking that and making it a little bit better. Any further questions about the zoning code? That's all we have. That's it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yes. And to item six, the tracking. Thank you, Mary. This was requested by Wayne Clark. Um, so after the last meeting, we looked into this further. So historically, how we've kind of tracked um, our planning commission projects is just these scheduled check-ins with the applicants after five months, and then we would update the planning commission as needed. Uh, so that, uh, on the request of the planning commissioners, we want to uh, move to a little bit more consistently plan tracking. So we'll still do those scheduled check-ins with the applicants at five months. Uh, we, will, we also developed a project tracking spreadsheet, uh, and we will we'll give more regular plan commission updates. Uh, so the project tech tracking spreadsheet is the main kind of deliverable here. Uh, this is very close to being finalized, but we still have some updates to make before we'll share it with you all. Uh, the, specifically, our 2021 plan commission items, we're kind of doing a historical review, going through it, finding all the spots uh, you know, where they're at in the permitting process. Uh, we have 11 kind of profiles uh, left to complete with that. Um, so this is a sample of what the tracking sheet will look like. This is from our 2022 items. Uh, so we'll have the, you know, the names and addresses of the project, which staff member is taking the lead on it, uh, the type, which means you know, whether it's a special use permit or a site landscape architecture review, sign, a uh, master sign program, et cetera. Uh, then we'll have its status, uh, which tells us you know, kind of how far along the process it is. Then after that, there'll be the dates at which it achieved different, um, different kind of landmarks. So uh, when it went to planning commission, when it was approved by county council, uh, when it got its building permit, et cetera. So this would be something we would share with the planning commissioners. It would just be an Excel, um, Excel file that you guys would have access to. We would update regularly. Um, and then we will, after the commission meetings, a uh, little more regularly update you guys. So here's our first update is for for this month um there's several items that kind of move forward from class or past plan commissions uh for 2021 the motor castings uh, demolition permit was approved and demolition began on the site um this is right uh, right next to the alice chalmers kind of facility in there on what street is that steve uh, 65th, 65th street um another prop, uh, item for 2021 was from this was approved in december was the LL strip mall. This is at 3411 South 8th Street. Uh, the building permit was approved, so they're moving forward towards construction on that, on that project. Uh, from this January, our, the, the Ethiopian coffee, sh coffee shop was, um, its special use permit was approved by Common Council on March 1st. And then the HIDTA um, uh, project uh, applied for a building permit as well. So those January planning commission items are moving along. And then from February, uh, we had two special uses that were both approved by Common Council on March 15th. So that concludes our update. Any questions? Exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I like uh, that. We're moving in the direction of the tracking sheet. Of course. Well, I guess like it. Because like, one, of my, one of my thoughts like with this tracking tool is that it could be, right? It's both the staff would find a project that it's not moving along. <laughs> Right to the plan be if you can come to this meeting, make a presentation, perhaps give us some options of like what plan commission to take. But then okay. maybe to kind of take it to another step further, we, we refer items like say, I mean, 
so where, where there's like a little bit more uh, binding authority to act on, on something that we're seeing as perhaps an issue, a reoccurring theme, perhaps. Yeah, you, you could certainly uh, work to the, the council and certain, you know, if there were if there were certain properties that you were concerned about, you could certainly report to the council, but or you could tell us, but yeah, you, maybe, you know, maybe I that. guess. Um, if if the project has conditional or special use, um, there's a resolution that's been adopted by the county council. And I think honestly, by just telling us that hey, this uh, restaurant over here, whatever it would be, is tracking the uh, speed, they're delinquent certain things, whatever it may be, you could just let us know. We could we could follow up with the council, take next steps uh, leading to you know starting with a notice and order, and then if that violation continues, you know, it would go towards the municipal court. City attorney's office, we can involved. So, if you see things out there that you're concerned about, I mean, we can, and if it's not on our tracking sheet, or even if it is, I guess just let us know and we can either give you an update on that um, in, in terms of the details uh, or, and, and or take next steps as needed. Now, do applicants have to submit like a sort of a formal business plan or a type or only a project? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, usually with our with any application that comes in it's presented before you before before it comes to the plan commission, we want to make sure we have a complete application. That's going to include the you know, the application. It used to be a paper copy, but now we've since moved to a, uh, an online open go uh, platform for online uh, permitting. And so there's an application that the applicant fills out online. They they can then attach project description. You know the applicable plans. I like you saw this evening with your pioneer. They can attach the. Uh, Site landscape and architecture plan, stormwater management checklist, and civil engineering. Generally, we'll ask for, I think, what you're getting at too is like the timeline. Correct. And generally, yes. you know, like with their project, including their project description, would ask for a timeline. And yeah, we can follow up on when we reach certain stages on the timeline. Yeah, as well. Yeah, no, I think that'd be that's, that's all. Thanks. Anything else? Anything from the studio audience? I don't know, see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There's nothing else that we'll need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. You can decide who got the motion. I'll give the second to Jessica. Because <laughs> 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 right. four people. Right. 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 All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Brad. Which one was this? Oh, oh, was this? Well, I was going to get to the one. Oh, I thought you had tomorrow. Uh, big question. I think uh, just get the X. Maybe the Laura meeting. Get the X. Just get the change scenery.